Hey, it's me, MLB. As we say goodbye to Ida, we also say hello to Jiro. Yes, this is it, my lesbies and bye babies. You are finally getting a girl ex girl full book. And hey, well, hello to those who just love Jiro and have been wanting a book with her um, as your co star. This is a romantic book, so I'm just going to put it out there. If girls are not your thing, then jump across to literally any of my other books because they're all with male co stars. But if you've been hanging for some girl time, then stay seated and grab your popcorn. This is a pretty light hearted book. There are a few minor dramatic scenes, but for the most part, it's pretty chill, which I think we all needed after poor Yin's situation in the previous book. I'm going to be straight up and say that for YouTube purposes, I've cut a few fairly heavy petting scenes from this book, as although you and Jiro don't smash a home run, you still get handsy, and YouTube doesn't like that without the over 18s tag. So I've dropped it to PG, but if you know, you know, my book site holds all my original co written content, so you can find the deleted scenes there. That's pretty much it. So without further ado, I bring to you, you had me at Hey, Jiro X Female Listener. And here is chapter one of You Had Me at Hay, and it's titled, Hey. Yin, someone's in the store. Can you please go and give them a hand? Your dad called to you. You had your headphones on, music up, and phone in hand as you lazily scrolled through your social media of choice. So all you heard was a faint noise from outside your little bubble of happiness. What? You called back, slipping the headphones off and hanging them around your neck as you sat up and slipped your phone into your pocket. Customer! He yelled. All right, you hollered back. Hell, man, no need to yell, jeez. You mumbled to yourself as you hauled ass off the chair and dragged your feet out the door to the store. Your parents ran and owned the most well-known music store in your town and you attended the famous BAAS, Body and Acoustics School. Music ran in your veins and your life revolved around it in one way or other and people didn't recognise you without your headphones on or earbuds in. You were a bubbly, mostly happy person who was supportive and honest, but if someone pissed you off, well, you would definitely throw hands without a second thought. You were prone to procrastination and never seemed to learn from your mistakes, which caused a heap of sulking when the fruits of your procrastination came to fruition and were rotten. You considered yourself a fairly normal person, but your goofy side would come out when you got comfortable with someone. You loved music, anime and food. Your quirk? Uh, we'll get to your quirk later. You walked through the doors from the back storage area through to the front of the shop and stifled a groan when you saw who the customer was. It was a guy that had been trying to date you since the beginning of time. Oh, hey, Yin, he said with a flirtatious smile. Hey, you deadpanned. Can I help you? Oh, he sighed suggestively. I wonder, how can you help me? He asked rhetorically as he sauntered over to you and backed you up against the wall, doing a textbook cabadon. Get your frickin' cabadon off me before I kick your balls up in your face and replace your eyeballs. You growled angrily. <laughs> Aggressive. He chuckled as he leaned down, his face getting closer to yours. You asked for it, you snapped, bringing your knee up sharply between his thighs and crunching his crown jewels. He coughed and screeched as he collapsed on his knees in front of you, his hands cupping his crotch. You stood there glaring down at him with hands on hips. When I tell you I'm going to do something, I follow through with it, he said lowly. Now, if you're not here to buy music-related equipment, then I suggest you get out. He got up gingerly and limped, slashed, waddled to the door, whimpering pitifully. <sighs> Idiot, you huffed, turning and walking back behind the counter and slumping with your back against it. Why won't he get the hint, you mumbled angrily. You bent down and picked up a box that had come in that morning and opened it. It was the new music sheets that your dad had ordered and you brightened immediately. Oh yes, it's the score for that anime, you thought excitedly. You flicked through the first few and then stopped on your favourite anime opener, humming along as your eyes scanned the words. Hey, a somewhat apathetic voice said from behind you and you spun around in surprise, not expecting anyone to be there. Oh, oh, hey, you replied in a startled voice. Sorry, I didn't hear you come in. You added as you quickly closed the book and put it down. What can I do for you? The girl, who looked to be about your age, stood there, eyeing you with a lazy look for a bit, while aimlessly twirling one of her ear jacks around a finger and chewing her gum thoughtfully before blowing a bubble with it. The bubble popped and she pulled it back inside her mouth before asking her next question. Was that, um, the song from the anime? The girl asked in a casual tone. Okay, I don't even know who you are, but we're getting married, you replied with a dead straight face. 
What? She yelped in surprise as she stepped back, one arm up, crossed across her chest as if to defend herself, a light blush dusting her cheeks. <laughs> I'm kidding, he laughed. No, but seriously, how did you pick that up from me humming like, what, two lines? You asked in awe. Um, Lark, the girl replied as she looked away with embarrassment. <laughs> You're lying, you laughed. Are you a musician? No, well, kinda. My parents are musicians, so I've been around music my whole life, I guess, she said with a shrug as she looked down, tagging on one of her ear checks again. Um, well, that's an amazing ear for music you have, he said honestly. Hmm, the girl hummed, hiding her face with a fringe as she bowed her head further. Realising you were making her feel a little uncomfortable, you cleared your throat and changed subjects. <clears throat> so, um, can I help you with anything? You asked. Oh, um, yeah, just need to get some new drumsticks for my dad, she said in an even tone as she continued to play with her ear jack and avoid eye contact. Yeah, sure, he replied happily. Come with me. You walked out from the counter and jerked your head towards the drum section of the shop, indicating for the girl to follow you. This way, you said with a smile as you turned to walk off. As you turned to go, you quickly checked the girl out. She was cute. She had a black choker on and a mustard yellow top that had deep dope written in scratchy font on the front of it. She was sporting fishnet stockings under black short shorts with black boots and a black leather jacket on as the finishing touch. Mm, her aesthetics are on point. You thought as you showed her where the drum accessories were. So, um, what's your name? You asked her as she reached out for one of the boxes of sticks. Juro. Kyoka Juro. She replied matter-of-factly. Yours? Yin Lin. He replied with a smile. Call me Yin. Cool, she said. You can call me Juro. Sweet, he replied with a grin. You a musician? She asked bluntly as she turned the drumstick box over to read the information on the back. Uh, yeah, I go to BAAS, he replied. Sick, she replied in a casual tone, blowing another bubble with her gum as she relaxed her weight onto one leg. You? You asked again. Hero course, UA, she replied. A hero? That's awesome, he said enthusiastically. Yeah, she said with a shrug. It's okay, I guess. But you could be a hero, too. You're already pretty badass with your self-defense. I saw that guy get his ass kicked by you. Her onyx eyes settled on you, and you felt your heart flutter slightly as your face went bright red. There we have it, chapter one. What do you think? Are we on board? Seems okay so far. Stay tuned for chapter two coming tomorrow. See you then.